One question is how much inequality depends on who your parents are, right? So even if most Americans uh, can't agree necessarily about how much inequality is, is right, is good, is acceptable, most Americans will say, hey, you know what, at least everybody should have the same opportunity to succeed. I shouldn't have a worse chance uh, to succeed because my parents were poor and your parents were rich. And so this is called intergenerational equality, right? The extent to which uh, the previous generation uh, affects the inequality of the next generation. And so there's a couple ways to measure this. One is the intergenerational elasticity. Um, and it is, you know, how much people, uh, how much the previous generation influences the next generation. Um, it's usually measured uh, between zero and one, where one is uh, my income is completely determined by my parents' income, and zero is that it has no effect. Another way to look at this is to think about how many people go from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. And we'll look at that. Uh, the next slide here. And so here we have um, both for the United States and Denmark, we have the father's earnings quintile, just the poorest 20% and the richest 20% uh, on this axis, and then the children's earning quintile, the poorest 20% and the richest 20% over here. And so what you can see is that if you were born in the poorest 20%, then you have a 40% chance of staying the poorest 20%, right? We call that usually the poverty trap. Whereas if you were born in the richest 20%, you have a 36% chance of staying in the richest 20%. And so if we had complete equality, these would all just be equal to 20, right? Um, how many go from the poorest 20% to the richest 20%? Only 7.4%. How many go from the richest 20% to the poorest 20%? Only 9.8%. In Denmark, it's much more equal, right? It's much closer to 20% for these groups. Only 25% who are born in the poorest 20% stay there, um, whereas you know almost 17% who are born in the poorest 20% make it to the richest 20%. The interesting thing about the United States is that if you break this down by race, uh, there's big differences between white families and black families. So black families experience a much larger poverty trap uh, than do white families and a much lower, what I call an affluence net, this uh, rectangle, purple rectangle back here, uh, in terms of the richest staying uh, rich. Another way to look at this is the relationship between uh, income inequality, uh, well, measured by the Gini coefficient on the vertical axis, and intergenerational inequality. Um, and you can see that, in general, most countries that have a high level of uh, income inequality also have a fairly high level of intergenerational inequality. So the United States and the United Kingdom are up here. Denmark, Finland, and Norway are down here, although there are some exceptions, right? So Canada has pretty low intergenerational inequality while having pretty high uh, income inequality, whereas Switzerland is the opposite. They have pretty low uh, income inequality, but pretty high intergenerational inequality. One other interesting piece, so we're switching here from income to wealth, but this is based on a survey of uh, your ideal wealth uh, inequality. And so this top line says, all right, well, how much of the wealth should be owned by the top 20%, uh, the next 20%, etc. And you can see ideally people say, all right, well, the top 20% should own, you know, maybe 30, 35% of the wealth. The next 20% should own, you know, a significant share. Even the bottom 20% should own more than 10% of, of wealth. Um, you can see there are some differences uh, for, you know, rich people compared to uh, less rich people. So income over 100,000, income less than 50,000. Um, and then they're asked, all right, well, what do you think the actual distribution of wealth is? That's this line here. And you can see that they realize that wealth is less equal than they would like. Um, so it's about 58% estimated for the top 20% and only about, you know, 3 or 4% for the bottom 20%. But then you compare it to the actual distribution of wealth. And you can see that we are even more unequal than people realize. 
Uh, the top 20% owns about 85% of the wealth, and almost all of the rest is owned by the next 20%, right? The bottom 60% only own about 4% of wealth. The bottom 20% doesn't even show up there um, because they basically have no net wealth. They just have debt. Uh, so this is interesting. You can do the same thing based on income, and you see similar uh, patterns. Income, of course, is more equally distributed than is uh, wealth, but it's still pretty unequal in this country and more unequal than people uh, say they would like. 